For a young person, choosing your first new car is never an easy task. Naturally, you want something that's as smart and as fashionable as you are, but there's an awful lot more to consider, not least of which is money. Of course, the car needs to be affordable to buy, but needs to be affordable to run too, so low insurance costs, good fuel economy, and cheap road tax are a must. That almost inevitably means you're looking for a car that's quite small and quite cheap. But just because you are, that doesn't mean you have to feel shortchanged. On the contrary, small cars today are packed with more kit and more quality than ever before. You see, manufacturers have to make cars that satisfy people who are downsizing from something larger, but who aren't prepared to sacrifice the quality, the kit, or the refinement they've come to expect. All of which is music to the ears of South London-based engineer Adam Rice. He's in the market for his first new car, and we brought along three very different models for him to try. Before he does that though, let's find out exactly what it is that he's after. So I've recently graduated and I've just moved to the London area. I'm looking for a car to get me to and from my new job and also to get me around to my sports clubs and things like that. I'm looking for something that's quite stylish and easy to drive. This will be my first ever new car, so I'm quite curious as to what the three cars we have lined up today will offer. Adam's first choice is a Hyundai i10, and there's an awful lot to recommend it. Above all, it's the cheapest of these three cars, but beyond that, it's also in the lowest possible insurance group and has the best warranty package, with five years of roadside assistance and annual vehicle health checks on top of its unlimited mileage cover. If there is a downside, it's that this car is the only one with carbon dioxide emissions of more than 100 grams per kilometre, and that means that its road tax won't be free after the first year. It's also the least economical of these three cars, but to be honest, an average of over 60 miles per gallon is still very impressive. I'm particularly impressed with the cost of this car. It's the cheapest of the three to buy, and also the five-year warranty also makes it particularly appealing. I think this is quite a conventional looking car. Nothing particularly stands out massively. Having said that, I do particularly like the fog lights and the grill on the front, and I would not be ashamed of turning up in this car in my local football club. The conventional theme on the outside is continued on the inside. They have nice big buttons quite high up on the dashboard, which are easily found, which makes everything very simple and easy to use. It's quite a spacious car. You could easily fit a couple of people in the back to take to your local sports club. And I quite like the blue interior on the inside. It's matched with the seats and the dashboard, which is quite stylish, I think. One button I particularly like on the steering wheel is this mute button. This is because just moving to London, I don't know the roads particularly well. So I like to cut the music so that I can concentrate on the road. The boot is surprisingly spacious. You'd be able to get a lot of uh, sports equipment in here, cricket bags and things like that. The thing that strikes me the most about the Hyundai is the ride quality. It's very, very smooth and very comfortable. The reverse gear in this car doesn't always engage at first attempts. However, I have no complaints about the response to the engine in the first few gears, which is very good. I could also imagine taking this car on a longer journey. It is very comfortable. My one reservation is the road noise. With this car, everything complements each other. With the buttons, the steering wheel, the colour design, everything seems to be very easy and simple. I love that. 